a poll by Jennifer Koffendoffer. Uh, give me a second to put it on the screen. It's a poll about the death penalty. And to be totally transparent with you, What's up, guys? True Crime King back. How we doing tonight? Sunday night. Hope everybody's doing well. Uh, I had a great weekend. But uh, anyway, uh, um, I'm going to be doing a reaction here. It is called, Finally, We Hear from Brian Koberger's Mother. Uh, I've been wanting to uh, watch this for a video for a couple of days now. I know it's been out for uh, like a week or so. And uh, it's gotten over like 100,000 some views. So I'm hoping it's a good one. Uh, yeah, this is from uh, what Tyler Feller. So uh, let's see what he's got. Let's see uh, what Koberger's mother has to say. Here we go. You, I personally don't have a leaning one way or the other on this question. I have thoughts about the death penalty that are rooted in my understanding of what the Bible teaches, which is really conflicting. And so I'm still sorting through it. So please have some grace for me as I'm trying to get... Yeah, let me know what you guys think about the death penalty. I personally believe um, if if you kill innocent people, uh, if you're a pedophile, uh, if you if you rape, uh, you know, all that kind of shit. Uh, yeah, I am uh, an advocate for the death penalty, depending on uh, your the crime that you commit, and if you're found guilty or not. I mean, there's got to be, you know punishment you can't just go taking people's lives right so uh there's got to be some kind of deterrent i mean that's that at least that's my opinion uh let me know what you guys think but uh yeah here we go down to the bottom of the answer for it for myself but that doesn't mean that your opinion won't impact or matter to me so i really want to know what what you think but jennifer coffin so what i'm saying is if coburg is convicted I believe he should get the death penalty. Hit the like button if you agree with me. If you don't, uh, put in the comments uh, why you don't uh, agree with the death penalty for cases like this. Offer put this poll out. Uh, if convicted, are you in support of the death penalty for Brian Koberger? She had almost 6,000 people participate in the poll, and 77% of people said Yes, and uh, about 14% of people said no. Obviously, the crime that Brian Koberger committed was horrific, and horrific crimes deserve horrific, uh, you know, sort of responses to it. I know that the Gonzalez family in particular has been pretty outspoken in their desire for the death penalty to be taking place in this. Some of the comments have said... Yeah, I mean, think about it. If, if Koberger had killed, uh, you know... Your sister, your wife, your girlfriend, uh, whoever. Would then you know think about it from that point of perspective. I mean, then would you be a proponent of the death penalty? And if not, I want to know why in the comments. It says I have a question: Is it true that they'll let the families decide, or does the judge have the ultimate say? Jennifer says the jury, and she says the jury will then decide if the defendant will be sentenced to death. Uh, L.A. Fowler says this is a loaded question. Uh, this can only be answered after we've seen the trial evidence. Innocent people are convicted all the time. Jennifer says, I respect your point of view. Sheila says, if Lindsay Clancy doesn't get the death penalty, neither should Brian Kovrig. Or Jennifer just says, interesting uh, premise. So, I don't know. I want to know what you guys think. I'm really surprised that 77% of people... I am not, Yeah, I don't want to get into other cases, you know, in the comments. I'm just, I just want to talk about Koberger and this Idaho murder case in the comments. No other cases, just this case. ...are saying that, yes, they think that he should get the death penalty... But then again, I'm not surprised. So you let me know what you're thinking about that. The other thing was this story from News Nation. I'm not going to play the video, but I'm going to link it if you're interested. Uh, News Nation did do a video. But tonight. Uh, again, <laughs> I don't know how she keeps doing it, but Ashley Banfield appears to have information after information source, essentially saying this time that there has been some private meetings. I don't know how there was a private meeting. 
that she knows about. Private means between Ann Taylor, who is the attorney for Brian Koberger and the judge in the case, I believe her name is Megan Marshall, and they just decided that any conflict of interest that would possibly exist doesn't exist. The most obvious thing uh, from my perspective, from the point of view of conflict of interest, obviously involved Xana Kronodal's mom. There was, I think, four different occasions where Ann Taylor had represented Xana Kronodal's mom. And Kara, is her name, Kara Worthington or Kara Kronodal, she's been on the record multiple times saying that she felt like she was betrayed because of this. She has no idea what she's supposed to do. Ann Taylor actually had her power of attorney. And so she's in this really strange situation where she's like, here's a woman who I'm supposed to be depending on to help make decisions about. Yeah, well, don't worry. Uh, Justin at J. Rod Speaks is apparently working for the uh, Coburger's defense, right? So uh, he, he should be fine, right? <laughs> my livelihood. And now she's representing the person who's accused of killing my daughter. And so I felt just from my own heart a little bit of compassion for Zana's mom and thought that there could be some conflict of interest there I, a couple of but yeah uh ann taylor should never have taken this case in the first place i don't care if she's you know one of the only ones in idaho qualified to uh try this case i mean fly somebody in if you have to but don't use ann taylor right uh, weeks ago we joined in on sleuthy goosey's twitter space and there was sleuthy goosey somebody who works in the public defender's office go through why this is not a conflict of interest obviously the judge in this situation is agreeing and saying no this is not a conflict of interest but the really interesting piece of information from my perspective on this is that the late county prosecutor is going on record saying that they believe there is a conflict of interest and they want they want and desire for there to be a separation then i think that that's a big deal they desire for there to be a separation one more piece of information coming from jennifer Koffendoffer. she posted this just a couple of minutes ago she said someone asked about brian koberger's familial relationships and she said for your consideration please be please see below judging from these posts it appears that he was very loved by his mom okay so maybe uh this is what he's talking about uh, with his mother speaking out. Let's see. And I'm going to share that with you. I've been a little curious about this as well because we don't know much about the relationship that Brian Koberger had with his mom, had with his sisters. All that I know is that we've seen a relationship that's existed between him and his dad. And so now we're going to show you some Reddit posts uh, coming from his mom. And so um, it, this was her reddit page d deleted obviously because of everything that took place but she wrote a post saying thank you so much for saying that to me my son will be in pullman in the eastern part of the state quite close to the idaho border he knows absolutely no one and we have no family there i worry about him being lonely so your message made me feel better so somebody had written her a message Wow. Well, I mean, this is a, a grown man we're talking about, <clears throat> right? Uh, I'm sure he, he he should be able to make some friends, uh, especially, or he should have, right? I mean, he he had a job. He could have made, you know, work friends, all, you know, but he didn't, apparently, right? She's expressing concern about Brian Koberger going to Washington State University to work on his PhD. He he made friends that uh, didn't know he existed. He was stalking them. Clown. Program, and I think it's interesting that she's worrying about him being lonely. I am totally interested in your perspective if that's loaded. And the only reason I think that there's a little bit of ammunition behind that statement is because she has an awareness, she has a knowledge, she has this concept. Yeah, I mean, Koberger must not, uh, you know, have had many friends or girlfriends or anything. That's why she's probably saying that, right? I mean, even if he moves, he could have still, you know, kept in touch with some of his friends back home but and stuff. But, uh, yeah, I guess he didn't have many. And uh, we can see why now possibly that there's something chemically wrong 
intellectually wrong, emotionally wrong, personality driven wrong with her son and might be thinking that there's a situation that could sort of derive out of his loneliness. That's a little bit of what I was thinking. Uh, this person that she's in the conversation says, I understand I moved here without knowing anyone, but I ended up liking it and making it my home state. Legal protections are strong here and there's a good safety net. What the heck does that even mean? Legal protections are strong. Yeah, I don't know what that means either. Strong here and there's a good safety net. What does uh, this person mean by there's a good safety net? I don't, I don't understand that at all either. Safety net. What the heck does that even mean? It's sometimes hard to meet people, but as we start to worry less about COVID, I imagine that'll become easier. He'll be okay, Mama Bear. She said, you're okay, thank you so much. But then there's another post that she wrote where she said, hello friends, today my 26 year old son left for Washington. Yeah, the, 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 the dude was 26 years old when he left for Washington. I mean, Jesus, you know? I think I moved by myself. Uh, to Pittsburgh when I was like 22, 23, you know. Washington State to begin. Uh, you know, but then I didn't really like it in Pittsburgh. His doctorate in criminology. We live in Pennsylvania. I probably won't be submitting many designs in the next few days because I will be too busy crying. I will see you all soon. So here we're seeing a mom who is crying 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 because i wonder what the mom thinks now after she knows her son is a murderer well i guess allegedly we'll wait until after the trial but i get i wonder what she's thinking i mean still he's on trial and, and, and has been accused of killing four people it's got to put a big uh hurting on her at least right you know her son's going away to Washington State University. And I, you know what I mean, think that uh, there's a couple of things that are confusing about it. One, she got the age of her son wrong. See, not 28 year old, but the most could have been 27. So we see over here in the comments section, Stephanie says, I respectfully disagree. He's 28 years old. She should be happy and proud. He's out on his own getting it. So his, his, his own mother put the wrong fucking, uh, his age, wrong age on, on there. He was actually 28. Jesus Christ. Yeah, he's... Mom, it's time to let go, you know. He'll, he'll be okay. Well, he won't anymore. In an advanced degree. I was a helicopter mom also, so I get it. But not to this extent. He's not a baby nor young adult. He's a grown man. And then... You know, I... <laughs> Never mind. Jennifer <laughs> says, actually, this would have been the summer of 2022. His birthday is... Me and my mother left when I was 17, you know? Uh, November of 1994. I hate math problems. Um, she loves him, but got his age wrong. Jennifer says, well, he would have been 27. And I have to say, shamefully, I have 20-year-olds, and I've taken a year off their ages before accidentally... I know their dates of birth and their years, but not the best at keeping it straight. Embarrassingly, I've lost track of how many years I've been married before, too. And I can relate to that. I get people in my family's ages wrong all the time. Heck, I get my age wrong half the time. Ken Thomas says, remember Brian Laundry told his mother, parent, she was covering up for him, too. Jennifer says she is no Roberta. You guys, we've had extensive conversation on if there was an accomplice in this case. Is it possible that Brian Koberger's mom knew what was going on? Is it possible that his dad knew what was going on? Uh, it's yeah, it's 100% it's possible that his mom and dad knew what was going on. I mean, I'm sure Koberger, most people, uh, you know, after they commit a murder, confide in somebody, right? That, I mean, that's how a lot of them get caught, because the people that they tell, tell the cops. First time we're ever here. And we know there's an informant, right? We just don't know who it is. Hearing anything from his mom. We've obviously seen the picture in the photograph of the dad in those police camera stops. So a lot for us to be thinking about and processing through. I'm shaking in my boots a little bit that we're getting shaking in your boots, getting a glimpse into the mother's life and, and sort of her affection and affirmation for her son. I'd love to be able to hear from the sisters now. Obviously, we don't want to have any overreach or, you know, invasion of privacy and they're uh, 
Yeah, I'd like to hear from the sisters too, but you know, I'm sure they're not going to be doing too much talking, especially uh, about the case because of the gag order and uh, yeah. So, uh, but yeah, that's uh, that's the end of the video. He just rambles on for about uh, another minute, but uh, hope you liked it. Uh, you know, let me know what you think of uh, what his mother said on this Reddit thread. Uh, hit the like button if you did like it. If you didn't, you don't have to hit the like button. It's okay. And until next time, True Crime King from Baltimore, Maryland, out.